Hello everyone, the Green Scorpion here, and if there's one instrument that I hold in the highest regard, it's the piano. As you guys may know, I am a pianist myself, and take it from me, the piano is a marvelous piece of work. What's unique about the piano is that instead of only being able to play one note at a time, it's able to play up to 10 notes simultaneously and sometimes more, making it able to play even the most complex orchestral pieces alone or accompanied by other instruments. If used as the dominant instrument, the piano is a versatile wonder, and some video games have harnessed its capability of making truly wonderful pieces, which is why I'm going to list the top 10 greatest video game piano songs. The play before place rule will not be in effect, but the one per franchise rule still stands. Also, for a song to count, the piano must be the dominant instrument of the piece. Alright, let the recital begin. For a DS game, the game incorporated the piano into this song pretty well. Confess the Truth 2009 is a song that plays any time Miles Edgeworth is close to getting his suspects to confess the truth, as it were. And this song reinforces the mood of that moment perfectly. The piano plays a smooth, intense melody while the strings play some drawn-out chords in the background to add tension and suspense. The percussion is subtle at first and then becomes forceful in the middle of the song. All of the secondary instruments follow the piano very well as it plays a legato of notes and some impacting power chords. The only thing keeping this song from being higher is that the piano does get lost in the secondary instruments from time to time, and the song wouldn't be what it is without the loud strings. However, when this song plays, you know you just need one more OBJECTION until the truth is revealed. a very peaceful song, which fits considering its title. Beyond Good and Evil is an action-adventure game that didn't really see too much of the spotlight due to low sales, but one thing that has been said about it is its music. Home Sweet Home's peaceful legato melody coupled with a string bass line that gives off a sense of mystery comes together to create a wonderful gem of a game track. This feel is complemented further with the game's plot revolving around planetary enslavement and alien conspiracies. No matter where you are or what you face, you always have a home to go to. While this song is a bit repetitive, this is one song that certainly says home. Rose was a game that was riddled with controversy, and was banned from release in several countries as a result. That's a shame, because this game's soundtrack is quite beautiful, and though I haven't played the game myself, I heard it's quite a unique take on the survival horror genre. The piano etude has a nice classical feel to it, so much that it sounds like something written by both Chopin and Tchaikovsky. The irregularities in the rhythm allow for a nice play with the dynamics. 
ultimately resulting in a well-composed piece. While it is a little on the short side, this song is beautiful and it's a shame that many missed it. I know a lot of people have negative feelings towards Metroid Other M, but I actually like this game. Anyway, this song has a very peaceful melody and the backstory is quite heartwarming. Throughout the whole game, Samus has been struggling in her relationship with Adam Malkovich and it's at the end where she finally realizes how much she meant to him. This song takes its time with the melody and it goes into more detail with a melodic tune and a good play with the major and minor chords. Maybe a bit out of place in a Metroid game? but the execution certainly gave it a well-deserved spot within the game, as well as on this list. After defeating Pain, rescuing the Hidden Leaf Village, and inheriting the will of Jiraiya and the 4th Hokage, Naruto can finally get some well-deserved rest, and this song perfectly represents the feeling of satisfaction. The credits theme from Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 2 closes off the main scenario of the game with a beautiful melody, coupled with harmonious chords and arpeggios on the bass line. The composition is well put together and the presentation is superb and this song gets bonus points for being a full 5 minutes long without looping once. This song was a perfect way to end the main story of this game, and it's a great addition to one of my personal favorite soundtracks of all time. not have been the most lovable character in the game, but it was such a sad moment when she finally had to say goodbye. Fee's gratitude starts off with a simple but well-executed melody with some nice chords on the bass line. Then the song continues with strings coming in to complement the piano. What's great about this song is, while it does use other instruments, they don't take away from the piano, keeping a nice balance between melody and harmony. It causes a song to amplify the feelings of happiness, sadness, and satisfaction. It is truly one of the greatest piano pieces in video games as of today.
For a soundtrack that mostly consists of piano songs, picking one from Kirby's Epic Yarn was no small task. However, the theme from Tempest Towers not only had musical value, but nostalgic value. Anyone who is a Kirby fan will immediately recognize the melody of this song, Butterf Building from Kirby's Dreamland. Tempest Towers gives it a makeover with a jazzy piano melody, coupled with stunning harmonization and a small ensemble of background instruments, including drums and a bass. What's also great is that this song transitions from an upbeat style of jazz to smooth jazz and vice versa every verse, so you get a fresh sound throughout the entire song. This song gives a cheery vibe that fits the mood of Kirby's Epic Yarn perfectly, and is a welcome addition to probably the cutest game the Pink Wonder has been a part of. Final Fantasy X has had mixed opinions among gamers, but no one can deny that one of the strong points of this game is a soundtrack. With that, we have two Xanarkand, a piano track that might just be the most popular piece in the soundtrack. This song's melody is memorable and entrancing, and the bass line plays a subdued melody of its own that complements a treble line. In fact, the bass line of this song barely gets a rest throughout the song. This song gives off a vibe that makes you feel right at home which makes it a rather sad piece considering Titus' puzzling but despondent backstory. This song truly merits a spot on the list, but it isn't any higher because dynamics aren't exploited to the fullest in this song, while the next two songs go above and beyond with their compositions. me to know that this song is in a Pokemon game of all things. This song is gorgeous. N was basically the rival to the main character in Pokemon Black and White, and his story is interesting and somewhat heartrending. At the end of the game, N becomes a very lovable and relatable character, and when he says goodbye, it might just be enough to make even Blue cry. The song itself is musical bliss. The melody uses the higher notes of the piano to create a beautiful melody and the bass line comes in with some nice congruent arpeggios and symphonic chords. Then in the middle of the song, the strings come in with one of the greatest accompaniments I've heard in a while, and there are a few things better than the well-tuned string ensemble. N's Farewell is truly one of the best piano songs ever in video games, and it excites me to say that there is still one more song yet to come. Alright, this recital is just about over, but before we get to the finale, let's recap. Number 10, Confess the Truth 2009. Number 9, Home Sweet Home. Number 8, Rule of Rose Piano Etude. Number 7, Metroid Other M Piano Medley. Number 6, Naruto Storm 2 Credits Theme. Number 5, Fee's Gratitude. Number 4, Tempest Towers. Number 3, Two Xanarkand. And number 2, Ends Farewell.
wonderful. Just wonderful. I've never even heard of this game before someone showed me this song, and now I want to play it from just hearing this song. Beginning of Fall from Manakemia 2 is a composition worthy of Koji Kondo and Nobuyu Matsu themselves. This song has a soft, lovely melody coupled with a bass line playing chords and arpeggios to add harmony and detail. Also, this song uses dynamics in the best way possible. The switching from forte to piano dynamics flows very well with the irregularities in the tempo and rhythm, and this song has accented notes exactly where they should be, adding a level of impact and emotion. All of these details come together to make a truly unforgettable piece. Kondo and Yumatsu are two of my favorite video game composers of all time, and Ken Nakagawa just joined them in my respects by giving us the number one greatest piano song in gaming history. I'm the Green Scorpion, see you guys next time!